listeners, welcome to another episode of the Snowy's Camping Show. If you have not joined us before or if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe via your favourite podcast app or via YouTube where you can watch and listen to us at the same time. Today we've got a bit of a fun topic. We're just mm. talking about camping lingo, uh, terms that are used around the campsite or probably maybe within the shop and within our industry a little bit more that some people might think, what are you talking about? Yeah, totally. Um, so I'm sure we're going to get from, we've got quite a list here that we'll sort of flick through and talk about the funnier ones, but I'm sure there's going to be, I'm hoping there's going to be heaps of people who've got their own lingo to add to the chat in yeah, our absolutely. Facebook group, which I didn't mention before. Make sure you join that and you can jump in on the conversation. So The list has sort of been compiled by a couple of people's ideas around snowies, haven't it? Isn't yeah, it? It's, it's funny. It's, kind of, it's mm. alphabetical order, right? It goes alphabetical and then it mm. gets down here and then it goes back to B after T yeah, or something. So, I saw that. <laughs> so there's no structure to this. We've just got a whole list here and we'll see how we go. Mm. But <laughs> so we've got, there's a few sort of technical ones, I suppose, like Bivy we start off, don't we, which is... I like the oh. description we've got here. It's a waterproof sack for emergency shelter, but I guess you could call it a very basic one-person tent, couldn't you? But well, is it – because I always thought a bivy was like a a waterproof sort of tarpish bag that you sleep inside of. I think, yeah. I, well, yeah, you can make a bivy too. It's kind of referred to as a, a usually a small spot that you've – and generally in a mountaineering type term, there's okay. a – a space for someone to bivy down on it because you can't pitch a tent. You've got to use a bivy bag, right? Yeah. Which is the bag you, you call okay. into and good quality yeah, ones yeah. are made of Gore-Tex. But yeah. um, I think I've also sort of heard it used as sort of a general term for a very basic shelter for one person or two people. So, so. technically it's not a shelter. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's a bag. It's a bag. shelters you. So you just, yeah, instead of having a, a sec- separate shelter, you sleep in your sleeping just, bag and whatever, but you pull this waterproof thing over the, the top, top. Yeah. like as if you're at the footy and you've got a garbage bag on you, except well, you're guess, hiking and you're using this thing over <laughs> your, your I guess sleeping that's a bag. Really rudimental way of looking at it, but yeah, basically, okay. yeah, and it's it's really like a mountaineering thing. So if you yeah. you really don't have room to pitch a tent, okay, uh, or you've got to bivy down very quickly, you've got a warm bag, you crawl in there. Yeah. The good ones or, or mountaineers probably use. Um, One's made of Gore-Tex or really breathable material. Super lightweight, ultra seal sort of waterproofy stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So oh, you just cool, crawl cool. in and get out of the elements. So. But then, of course, you can get like the hardcore, you know, camo khaki ones that oh, yeah. push people use and whatever. I guess so. Yeah. I've never used one. I've, I've never used one either. Made a bivy with a tarp, I suppose, you sleep under, but not actually in a I don't think bivy. they're called boobies. I think they're boobies. boobies. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new term, a boobie. Bivy. Let's make that one up I was going to say, I think they're called hoochies. Yes. Oh, yes. With a tarp is a hoochie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but the but bivy I guess the is term is you can make different. a little bivy with a hoochie. I'm not sure. But generally, it's a bag. Okay. It's, if you buy a bivy bag, yeah. then it's a sack. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we've got caught up on the first one and we've got a list of like <laughs> 40 here. So, uh, uh, what's the next one? Billabong. Billabong is pretty self explanatory, I think. It's a mass of water. Yeah. It's like we've got here a branch of a river forming a backwater or stagnant pool. Made by water flowing from the mainstream during a flood. So, yeah, sort of like it's not really wetlandy, is it? It's sort of more. Uh, yeah, kind of bird life area. I suppose. Bird life area, like a lake, mm. but not. I'm, yeah, Separate I'm not to the sure river. The technical. There's been. There's, I probably can't have come across the most quintessential billabong ever in New South Wales on um, family friend station. It was amazing. Like, oh, okay. Genuinely, like bunyip house oh, okay. beautiful well we went to um there's a place in adelaide here called warrawong sanctuary we went oh, there yeah. on the weekend with the kids for a um, dusk walk yeah and they've got an area down the bottom that i think they're called the billabong because they've got like a series of lakes and it'll yeah. the billabong at the bottom so yeah but like, a, is that technically a billabong though I, I don't know i'm not sure what the actual because where, according this, to this definition <laughs> it's supposed to come from river like a f- well, overflowing of a river and it's like a, a wallow or a pond oh, or a maybe. thing that comes from a, a river overflowing. Look, don't don't take our word on this. But for, no, for Warrawong a, is amazing. Yeah. Mm. We, we may or may not justify the interpretation <laughs> yeah. of these terms here. We're just talking I about know. things that we use all the time. Totally. I guess the next one, boar, could be, I don't know, could a boar create a billabong? But a boar is basically a, something sunk in the ground. Like Perny boar is the one that comes to mind for me, which is on the edge of the Simpson Desert. It's a capped bore that goes down to the Great, or maybe the Great Artesian Basin. I'm not sure. I might be pulling facts out of the sky again, and the water comes up, and then it, you know, yeah. Um, well, here's here's my thing. I thought a bore was man-made. 
Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. So it is. It's not like a oh, spring yeah, yeah. or it's, it's not where it's cut. coming up on its own. It's so, like yeah. physically been drilled down to create a bore. As far as I'm to aware. To a water yeah. table. Yeah, so yeah. So this, this was a dry area until they put a bore there and now, yeah. it's, now it's a, I guess it's a wetland, not a billabong. So it's that groundwater stuff. Yeah. Mm. A few boring ones, BTU, British Thermal Units, which is a measure of how hot the Yeah, so stoves are. will have it like, you know, 10,000 BTU or whatever. I don't yeah. actually know what a British Thermal Unit is. It's a like I well, don't I don't actually know what the act do you know what I mean? It's like how I don't as in I don't know how the BTUs are measured. Uh. Like <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense here, but you know how you're like, oh a mil, like this is what an actual mil like oh. a, a mil and a gram, they're sort of more quantifiable. I'm not sure You're looking for like how many how, how like many what um, a B- how, how many degrees uh, is a BTU or something? Is that what you're Yeah, like? just sort of like is there you know, because it seems like such a really sort of nondescript unit of measurement, whereas something like a mil or a gram or, you know, a centimetre or things like that, they're okay. more quantifiable. So I'm like, mm, right. maybe we'll. I'm starting to feel like we've become totally unprepared. Yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're totally telling you what unprepared. the term is, not necessarily what it means. So. But I think we've got but, um, sometime in the future, we've got like an episode that we want to discuss about stoves and stoves. things like that. So we'll probably get prepped we'll to actually know what we're we'll talking about then. here now yeah. and hopefully our uh, producer can make a note so we don't forget that now that we've loosely promised it. <laughs> exactly. Um, this one's interesting. Can, K, I don't I assume it's spelled right, K-A-I-R-N, K-A-I-R-N. but usually it's a, a a marker at a high point or not even necessarily a high point, but you quite often you see little piles rocks. of rocks. It's yeah. just an, an indicator that a path might change direction or something like that. I think it possibly is like, like Gaelic or something like that. Oh, it's it? got like. Um. Yeah, my I reckon that's the origins of it. Don't quote me. I, I'm probably totally wrong here, but I think it's sort of traditionally used as like a a landmark or a directional. I think so. Point of reference for navigation and things like that. That's I, I would say from my understanding, that's a mm. pretty good um, interpretation. But I love I love climbing to the top of a hill and like seeing. People have made, you know, places of significance yeah. anyway. People have made little cans. Just got the can. Yeah. Just climbed up and saw the can. Yeah. Is this Aussie to say? I think I might have just said K A I R N too, but it's C A I R N. Just want to yeah. correct myself there. C A I R N. Yeah. I've built quite a few, to be honest. Have you? Just yeah. random can. Just at the, when you get to the top of somewhere, you just build oh, one. Oh, okay. There's actually a, a Mount Cavern in South Australia in uh, Mount Remarkable sort of national park area near Alligator Gorge. Oh, yeah. Mount Cavern is like a huge can. Oh, okay. At the top of that. So when you get to the, to the top, top, you just, yeah. Okay. Just add one to it. <laughs> wonder how many how many more rocks are going to go in there before it starts to become unstable. <laughs> no, it's huge. It's huge. It's like probably as round as this table at oh, the really? base and it's huge. Oh, right. And people have just added more and more and more. Uh, haven't been up there. I'll check yeah. it out. <laughs> Moving on because we're like 10% of the way through this list. Cordura, it's a bit of a boring one, just a brand name of a very heavy duty nylon or mix of sort of materials in a fabric usually for yeah. heavy duty it's, packs it's and sort of like um is it sort of like Gore-Tex like it's an actual trademarked name oh, of a type of fabric is that yeah, what it is yeah, yeah not Gore-Tex in terms of a breathable <laughs> fabric but but in terms of the name yeah it's, yeah, it's yeah. Not, a, yeah not is it name. actually similar to Gore-Tex in its physical but it's like yeah you, you might hear others I don't know if we've got it here but there's others like I think Kodra is another one K A K O D R A I think which is like a another yeah, brand I've name of Kodra same same sort of thing so, yeah yeah but Cordura is kind of the, the um, most popular one. Yeah. But you love this next one. Well, no, it's not that I love it. It's DEET. <laughs> which is Which stands DEET. for um, dieth – sorry, I'm going to apologise in advance here because this is going to be a bit of a hilarious one. Diethyltoluamide, which is the most common ingredient in insect repellent. I'm just not really a fan of it. To me it's like super hardcore and, I mean, I'm sure, you know, people who are in the jungles of – Patagonia or whatever might need to use this or up in the tropics. I've just never really used it. It does it doesn't make me feel well, super yeah. well. I'm just a bit maybe sensitive to it, but it seems a bit hardcore. I think there is a divide there. I know I, I know I try not to use it on my kids. Yeah. Um I, I would probably only use it if if the danger of the bite is worse than the than the yeah. um, than the actual um what am I looking for? A chemical. Yeah. But it's used in a lot of the, the insect repellents you buy from the supermarket and everything. Mm-hmm. But it is like you can get this brand here, this Bushman's, they do really strong stuff mm. and you get cream and it's like 80% deet, I think. And I do recall having put that on my skin and it feeling tingly from time to time. Yeah. So I think you just use it 
moderately. Yeah, um, I'm not sure. If you need to, but yeah, that's that's what it is anyway. I think yeah, I remember using it once um, when I was a bit younger. It made me feel really unwell, but I just don't. Okay. We don't. I don't use mozzie repellent at all, actually. I don't need it. My wife does. She yeah. she doesn't need it because she just gets eaten alive. to really do. Okay. Yeah, which is lucky. Sorry for people yeah. who have well, to use it. You probably still get bitten. You just don't react to it maybe. Maybe, yeah, I reckon I think, that's probably it. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. So Denia. Denia. So you, uh, you could. This one comes up one. a lot, doesn't it? It does, yeah. <laughs> so you could have like a thousand Denia cordura, for example. So it's just a reference of the thickness of the actual, um, or sorry, to get um, more specific. And this is where it gets interesting. It's a weight in grams of 9,000 metres. I thought that might actually be 9,000 yards maybe. We might have something wrong there. Um, but anyway, a single strand of that all bundled up and weighed. So yeah. that, and that gives the denia. So I guess that then correlates to how thick it is. The thicker it is, the more it's going to be. Yeah, to I want to jump so. ahead here and pull GSM into this as well because often oh, yeah, some brands will advertise their um, – the their what do you call it? What am I thinking? Like their canvas or their material yep. quality in GSM, and some will advertise it in Denia. And a lot of people are like, well, how do you compare? We well, sort of can't really because they're two different things. Mm. Like you can have um, a really high GSM but a super low Denia, and you can yep. have a super high Denia but a super low GSM. Yep. So the gram the GSM is grams per square meter, which is essentially how many grams of fabric is in a square meter. Is yes. that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the denia refers to the individual fiber weight of the f- weight individual of the fiber. individual fiber within that particular fabric that's yep. used to make the fabric. So there's two different things. So sometimes if you have a super high denia um, fiber, it means the fiber is going to be a lot thicker, but the weave might not be as tight. So it will mm. be a lower GSM, and even though it's a heavier denier, the fabric might have a more open weave and whatever. Whereas if you have a that's it, yeah, yeah. So it's sort of so the it's same, a bit of a science. It's yeah. not necessarily straight up comparable. The same denier of fabric could have a different GSM if it's loosely totally. woven. It's a lighter GSM than if it's tightly woven. It's a heavier GSM. That's right. Because the total. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, I hope that made sense. <laughs> yeah. I love the next one. Donkey shower. And I didn't think yeah. I knew what it was, but when I heard the description, I went, oh, yeah, I think I have heard that before, but it's. I, I hadn't heard it before. And the definition that we've got here is that it's a shower that uses water heated from a campfire. And I was like, well, I have a donkey shower all the time because that's <laughs> what I do. I just heat my water and then use a 12-volt pump. But it's not. It's like a a homemade whole unit that heats water over a fire and somehow then well, it's, gets the water through to a shower head or something. So my, my interpretation of it is a, I, and I don't know exactly know how it's set up, but I remember mm. I'm pretty sure it's um, there's a campground up off the Una Data track. I can't think of it. Okay. Well, which campground is anyway? Though, it's it's an awesome shower to have. We but, might try and put it in the show notes if we can remember or find out after. Yeah, I will. Mm. It's right on the tip of my tongue, but I can't. Mm. I won't won't dwell It'll on come it. But to you. Uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure they made that out of just an old like one of the the tool like LP gas canisters, like the oh, home yeah. ones. Okay. And then that sort of mounted above a fire. So you light a fire underneath it and you fill that with water. So yeah. the fire then boils inside. And I think that then creates pressure to push the water out. up and out the ah. top. So there must then also be a refill mechanism to that or it gets filled up and then, sure. heated and then when it's empty, you're out. But So it's sort of like a hot water system at home with a hot water tank, but it's fire powered. Basically, yeah, 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 and it just uses the natural pressure or something of yeah. the of the steam or, or whatever mm-hmm. natural science happens inside the <laughs> the gas thing. Yeah, so. that's cool. Uh, we should move on because we should. are we are dwelling. <laughs> we're we're twenty five percent of the way through. Well, there's a few we got to stop on. There. The next well, one's called Donga, right? Now mm-hmm. <laughs> you had a funny interpretation of that that we well, won't go yeah, into. I, yeah, uh, I was a little bit like, isn't that rude? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a bit rude? But a transportable room to sleep in the outback. So basically, just a transportable house is a donger. You probably find them like a, on a work site. They might bring in some dongers for. Oh the yeah, work like up, to, up to in the mines in. or yeah, something. Just yeah, a little just mini one room transportable. Yeah, a feral. Pretty pretty simple. Yeah, we got a little pack um, here. The little um, metal things. That metal hold, like, sleeve. The, um, they're pretty handy to have because they're like if you, um, for example, if you're out camping and your tent pole breaks, then you thread one of those f- metal ferrules over the brake and yep. then a bit of gaffer tape 
can yeah. hold it in place and then that keeps your pole rigid. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're also really for handy. The, for the join of them as well. Yeah. So, yeah, it's good to have some, yeah. some spare ones. And they're good to have um, – there are some sort of tents like the pop-up tents, which are the ones that sort of curl twist in and, over them, twist yeah. over themselves like a beach shelter. They can be um, – sometimes if the poles break, they can be really challenging to get a replacement pole mm. for that. Um, and there is a way that you can sort of DIY repair them with a ferrule. So you definitely – um, Just have a few in your kit. Have a few handy. in the kit for sure. Yeah. Absolutely. GVM, let's not get into detail, but let's point out our previous episode on packing, packing like, like a, a minimalist. minimalist. Yep. something we talked mm-hmm. about GVM. I did have a comment recently. Uh, someone was correcting me on some things, yep. but I still think it's there's different interpretations of it. So Gross um, vehicle mass. Gross vehicle mass, yeah. Mm-hmm. The total mass your vehicle is allowed to weigh. Yep. Geodesic is refers to a like a dome basically that's got more than just two crossing poles. There's lots of different yeah. poles. The, the more poles that cross, it creates a yep. geodesic shape that's much sturdier for yep. base camp type scenarios. Um, Next one, Gorp. Gorp. I, see, this is you weird. Heard Never heard of it before. Good old raisins and peanuts. So it's just what like Gorp. a trail snack. Gorp. Just sounds really – And, and let's, um, let's pull in scrub Doesn't in here. sound appealing yeah, at all. This. What, raisins and peanuts? No, Gorp. You well, want Gorp some doesn't. Gorp? I'd be like, no, thanks, mate. It's raisins and peanuts. Wouldn't you just say, would you like some raisins and peanuts? I'd be like, absolutely. That sounds bloody delicious. If if they did that, we wouldn't be here talking about it today, (laughs) would we? That's true. true. So scrogan, scrogan, right? Sultanas. This one sounds better. Yeah, sultanas, Sultanas. chocolate, raisins, and other good grub, including nuts. Yeah. I know what scrogan is. Didn't know it was an anagram. Had no idea. Oh, really? Until right in this exact second. I may have been like that to love. <laughs> well, it actually it's means amazing. something. Uh, anyway. I didn't know it meant. Yeah, I didn't know it actually meant something. But I reckon I went so through scouts and never knew what it was. Yeah, I was I like, yeah, you want some scrub? Oh, that that sounds way better than yeah. gorp. But funny yeah, enough, yeah. I don't think I ever had chocolate in mind. So maybe mum and dad. Would yeah, have you know the little tiny little chocolate yeah, buds. Yeah, I yeah. see that. But I don't. When I was a kid, when mum made me scrub, uh, she didn't put she chocolate. Got a lot in. to answer for. I probably, reckon that's probably why she just kept the, the whole acronym <laughs> thing quiet. So, so yours was just sroggin. Yeah. Uh, all right, Gromit. Uh, uh, it's not a, a grubby little kid who's into wicked surf- outdoor adventure sports surfing and surfing or, and skating. Yeah, no. It is a small metal ring in the corners of your tarps. Um, pegs. The, yeah, they're sort of through. like um, Got a video other on. people call them eyelets, right? Grommets and eyelets, so. they're like yeah. the same thing. Kind of two sides to it. You stamp it through the fabric and you yep. can put a peg or whatever. We've got a little video yep. on how to do that where I completely butcher. Do you really? <laughs> I time. haven't seen that. I look back and I went, oh, I made a real mess of that. It's a real like roadside job. I could have done it tidy. <laughs> I'm going to go and watch that now. the general idea now. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> sort of follow how I did it. Oh, goodness <laughs> me. the idea. Um, uh, GSM, we've covered different types of toilets. That's a bit boring, but long, long drop. Um, yeah, different Cliv- types. Yeah, Cliv- so what- style biogas digester. There's some new things there. I've not composting toilet, sawdust toilet, long drop, outhouse, transportable toilet. Yeah, Cliver style. Obviously, com- composting. Oh, Cliver style composting and biogas digester. Look, I ha- I'm not really across what the last two are. <laughs> um, but they do sound interesting and I'm going to do some Googling after this. It's, we're, we're talking about terms used in the campsite and I, I don't think you, you're going to say, I'm, I'm off to I'm, the biogas digester. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll see I'll you later. I'll be back in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they're probably ones. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm getting a bit carried yeah. away here. Losing it, control. Yeah, losing control. So they're probably yeah. ones that like in forestry where they have a campground, they've got like a big toilet. It's probably yeah. the sort of systems that they use there maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. we just call them long droppers or something. Yeah, like long or, drops. Yeah, eco toilet or something. No CMS. No CMS, so this kind of goes back to the whole Cordura thing where it's a name of a, it's like a trademarked really fine mesh. mesh and probably the only one that's really like no CM being the name of Midgies, I another name for Midgies. I don't think no CMS claims to be midgy proof anymore. The only uh, reason why I reckon is because because um, they used to. There mm-hmm. used to be midgy proof statements on them. But because midgies are so small and they'll get into zips and anytime you open and stitching and all sorts of stuff. If you buy a, a product that has no CMS, which is guaranteed midgy proof, and then your tent's full of midgies because of all the other ways that they can get in, mm. you're going to, th- like, do you know what I mean? It yep. just opens it up for a bit of, so gives it gives yeah. you the best protection. But, but I mean, no CMS just mesh definitely anywhere. is. It's the finest, finest, yeah. finest mesh that which, you can which get. Which makes it not as durable. So if you're using swags and stuff, yeah, so that's it's true. kind of a trade off there. So you probably, you no know, mesh in a swag is probably not the best thing because of the heavier swag yeah. fabrics. But, uh, PSI, 
pounds per square inch, just mm-hmm. a measure of pressure. Talk about that in with a your tire. car tires, yeah. but then you can also, I guess we probably talk about it mainly with like air tents, poles, yeah. air tents, there's certain pressure that would be pumped there's up There's another one that's related to PSI. Is it, K, is it KP? No, not KPI, K something, KPA. Oh, uh, killer. Pascals, maybe? Yeah, maybe yeah, that's yeah, it. Something like that. You, it's sort of a, it's another unit of pressure, basically. Yeah, quite often a pump's got both of them. They've got PSI and KPA yeah. on it. But PSI is the one you hear the most. R value, we've covered off that in a episode. We talked to uh, – Dean from Cedar Dean Summit, from Cedar Sleep, Summit. Yeah, right, Sleep yeah. Systems, I think, um, was the episode yeah. we talked about that in. Yep. But it's like an insulation of a mattress, essentially. Basically, measure yeah. of thermal resistance, yeah, yeah. yeah, to protect you from everything underneath. Um, Ripstop nylon is just a, I don't know if that's a trademark name, but it's a thing. The thing about Ripstop though, is I want to say we've got Ripstop nylon written here on the page, but Ripstop in and of itself, you can get Ripstop canvas, Ripstop Ripstop nylon, Ripstop polyester. So Ripstop is actually a, a method of fabric design where there is a thicker, thread or section of threads of fiber, so heavier mm-hmm. denier fiber yeah, that's one. woven in a grid throughout yeah. the standard fabric, which makes it stronger and more tear resistant and things like that. Yeah. So you can usually tell it because it's got like the grid pattern yeah. on it. It looks like the maths yeah. paper you had at, at school. Absolutely. And it's usually a heavier nylon or polyester thread, like you said, through there. Yeah. And it just, if you can get a tear still, like you might tear through a few of those, but it stops Sort of stops it. Stops it, it yeah. Going and any I think further. ripstop nylon probably is the more commonly used sort of ripstop is used in conjunction with nylon because a lot of the super ultra light nylon things. Um, they do have that just to make them extra yep. durable. Yeah, mm. that's right. So we've We're got a bit to. of a geographical term, ridge, oh, yeah. um, which is – Chain of mountains so you can follow the – Yeah, the ridge, ridge line the along the top of the mountain. Um, and uh, while you're walking along that ridge, you might go over through a saddle. That's true. Which is the – Which is maybe, the the gap between two hills yeah. or mountains. So if you're going to walk between two hills, you want to go over the saddle because yeah. you have to walk as high to get over Speaking it. about that, because um, where you might also see a can on top of a ridge, but speaking about the ridges and the saddles and the cans with that Mount Cavern hike that I did, yeah. um, we went up the – real because there's a way where you do a loop, but then you just go straight up like this on one side and then you reach the, the summer and then you just sort of go all the way down yeah. the ridge to the car park again. And I sort of didn't really want to go. We'd already been on a hike and my partner was like, no, this hike isn't long enough. And I'm just like, I just <laughs> want to go back and eat lunch. He's like, no, nah, we're going to go and do this one. And I was in such a bad mood and he dragged <laughs> me up this mountain and, and the way that it went, it just sort of goes like this until you get to the point. But every time I got to a peak, I was like, oh, thank God we're there and we're going back downhill. But then it would just scoop because obviously there was lots of these little <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we finally got to the top, it was great. But anyway, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Switch back. Switch back. I guess that might be the path you take if you are getting up to the saddle. It goes mm. up the steep bit basically, but instead of walking straight up a hill to the peak, oh, you, yeah. it, it's a longer way to do it, but it's not as steep because you go kind of cross and then you switch back and go back across. Oh, yeah, so it's like zigzagging, so it zigzags up. up. So mm. it just makes getting up. You walk a longer distance, but you're not walking yeah, yeah. straight Probably up. Probably four a times as far, but it's a lower gradient. Yeah, yeah that's right, mm. yep. Summit. Highest point of the mountain. Highest point yep. opposite to the Now, this is saddle. a funny one. Spondooly. <laughs> we got one here. Or spondonicles. No idea that that a pot gripper was called that. Yeah, I don't, it'd be interesting to know where it originates from, but it, it doesn't yeah. sound very – well, I guess it maybe it sounds Aussie. I'm not sure if it originates here, but we've got one here. It's in its package, but it's they come a, with trangiers. They're really common in trangiers yeah. and stuff, aren't they? Yep. So these just little separate. It's kind of separates here. It hinges up here, and then there's a little pinch point there that you can just pick your pot up off the fire or your stove. Yeah. If you're not watching on YouTube, it's sort of like um, I don't even know how to describe no, it. It's two two sort of bits of U metal with a hook kind of thing at one end to grip the side of the pot. So, yeah, yeah. just so you don't have to grab the pot, yeah. pot pot with your hands. But, yeah, Spondooli is a funny name. I've always just called it a pot gripper. But, yeah. yeah. That's very Aussie, I think, just to go, yeah, it's just a pot gripper, mate. Yeah, but exactly. Anyway. <laughs> don't know. Spondooli sounds a bit more classic. Shellite. Shellite. I don't think we've gone into too much detail about fuel here. I think we've touched on it a bit, but Shellite's in this bottle here, but it's a more, my understanding, it's a more refined version of unleaded petrol. Okay. It's the same. So it kind of comes from the same. So it is. Material. It is sort of unleaded fuel, but it's refined. Yes. Well, well you yeah. Can, petroleum most, distillate. Apparently, well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. 
So stoves that you can use shallow and you can also use unleaded, mm. but unleaded doesn't burn as clean. So yeah, right. Clog okay. Up quicker, but Shell lights the cleanest burning fuel stove. Not to be confused with white gas. In America, they call it white gas. Here oh, yeah, right. in Australia, we've got a white gas, which I don't know if that's petroleum distillate, but it's it's different. White gas Shell or white spirit? White spirit, sorry. Yeah, white spirit. Yeah. Apparently, it's like a laundry fluid. Laundry, yes. people use it at, at laundromats and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. just be careful. Because it's not whites, the same thing. No, white spirit, white gas. So that- I, think, I think Americans refer to Shell as white gas. The next one we've got on our list is a spigot, which um, I love that word. I just think it's so cool. But yeah. it's it's uh, I've got it in my hand. If you're not watching, it is the insert in the top of an awning pole or a tent pole that has the little metal spike on it, which goes through an eyelet in your tarp or your awning or something or like grommet. that. Or a grommet. Or a grommet, exactly. Um, yeah, they're pretty cool. They come in different thicknesses and shapes and sizes and things and you can insert, get them as inserts to put them in poles if you don't already have them on the end of your pole and so things like that. They're create, cool. Create your own shoulder. Yeah. Uh, next one, freestanding. Freestanding is just a tent that holds its shape without the need. Yes, for- we. but I think it's sort of important because it's more relevant to hiking tents and things like mm. that and a lot of people sort of don't understand the concept of freestanding but it's essentially a tent uh, sp- specifically with a hiking tent that can be erected fully without needing to put pegs in which is an important yeah. factor because sometimes when you're hiking or you're on adventures where you stop over for the night, you might not be able to physically get pegs into the ground or it mm. might be rocky or things like that. So needing to consider whether or not the tent you've got is freestanding sort of is important. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they will often have guy ropes and we recommend you use them if you, if you can. Oh, yeah, definitely. But if you've got your freestanding tent without guy ropes and things pegged in, then don't – if it's windy – yeah. So stay in the tent. Yeah, stay in the tent. Because your tent's going to be down the mountain. Definitely. <laughs> Taped <laughs> seams. Taped seams, yeah. So uh, I think we've covered up this in another episode too, but, yeah, it helps with the waterproofing of the tent. So, <clears throat> excuse me, waterproof fabric, PU yep. coating on the inside, it's all waterproof, and then we go and stitch two bits together and put a whole row of stitching holes down there. There's a leak point. Of course. So they overcome that with applying a, a tape seam to yep. that on the inside yep. so the water doesn't get through, and that's usually applied under with heat and pressure Yeah. Uh, to the seam. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, what else have we got here? Tinder. Uh, Tinder. Not, not the, the app. app. We have a I'm too old note for here Tinder. from the producer. Um, uh, let me see here. So really? it's a flammable material that can be lit with a spark for lighting, kindling. You, you can make, there's no specific material that it's no. made of. Like you can make, like cotton buds are, are a good one for Tinder yeah. because they light with just a spark, something really, really fine. Or you can, with certain timber, you can create tinder by just making really fine stuff it's just yeah, to like, get that first yeah flame. exactly there's a lot yeah tinder it's just that first little bit isn't it of the fire just to get it going yeah mm. that's right the next one is tent seasons and the reason why we've got that one in there is because a lot of tents come with a season rating so mm. one two three four basically that just means if it's a two season scent it's tent it's good for sort of like summer springish if mm. it's three season autumn summer spring if it's four season it's obviously suits you for all four seasons yeah so it's probably just a good thing to keep in mind if you're looking for a tent yeah it's an interesting interpretation you can use a four season tent in all four seasons but it's more suited for the coldest seasons because yeah. it's usually got a full nylon in a yep. but a, like a one season tent you could use that in a four season environment but it's not recommended because no, it's, it's not going to be probably going to have a full mesh in a might in not a have as high water rating in the fly Best or the poles, floor et cetera, et cetera. yeah so if we were using an older term up here a four season tent is more likely to be a geodesic tent yep or, a, or even a snow tent probably or a tent, that, tent yeah it doesn't have mesh in it, it has yep. like much high water head rating like high That's grade right. poles things like that yep not yeah. an exact line in the sand about it's just not where an one exact, starts it's and just finishes. A, but it's a really – it's a good guide, a guide. though. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, ultralight hiker and lightweight hiker. I think that's kind of like a uh, – there's there's a, a group of people who are – I guess we're most hikers are light or ultralight – or lightweight hikers, I suppose. Everyone's mm. trying to carry less weight as they can. Yeah. The ultralight hiker kind of goes into this realm of, of people, and I may have been guilty of – being part of that at some stage yeah. and cutting down your toothbrush and trying you to trim to 10 be, grams well, you know here what? and there like, at the end pack, of the, so. I remember talking to somebody on the phone and they were an ultra lightweight hiker and we were sort of going through a couple of different options and it was literally a matter of grams for them. Like they wanted mm. to, you know, save a, cut a couple of grams of this and a couple of grams of that and whatever and we're like, and I just sort of was chatting to them about how, 
you know, insane it was that they're shaving off that. And he, and they were like, well, you know, if I cut down 200 grams, that's a block of chocolate I can carry. Yeah, and I was like, theory. oh, that's yeah. a really good theory. Like the yeah. more light weight your gear is, the more extra stuff you can yeah. you can take. There's also the instance of Sam who works with us. We, mm-hmm. We'd love to get her on the show. She won't how keen she is. No, but she's she's, not. That's okay. She's got um, other reasons why she needs to carry minimal weight. So, yeah, I think yeah. 12 kilos is her maximum yeah. carry weight. And I think – like, you know, I'm sure she'll correct me if I'm um, wrong listening to that, but that also includes like her food mm. and water and things like that. So, yep. So 10 super, grams. Here super, super ultra light. I think her, her pack's like 400 grams or something in the pack yeah. she carries. Crazy. It is crazy. Uh, what do we got here? Vegetable. Vegetable. I've been pulled up for saying this wrong in videos. Vegetable. Yeah. Vegetable. 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 I, it's if just I a say f- vegetable, it means vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the front section of the tent where instead of just having a wall with a door in it, it's got some extra little triangular bits that you peg out, which gives you yep. a little sheltered um, space. festival space, yeah, a little space, verandary yeah. awning thing to, so not, to store gear. it's not the awning. The awning kind of goes yeah. out to create shade. The vest, vestibule yeah. is kind of weather protected for your yeah. gear. Not, it's not like if wind, you zip the awning down or that front flap down, you've got a created space which is outside your tent inner, but it's still protected from wind and rain. That's, That's a good one. your vestibule yeah, area. Between the inner and the fly. Uh, waterhead, waterhead rating. Yeah. We've we have covered this it with uh, Ryan from Zempire. That's right. Yeah. That was yeah. a good one. So check that episode out. But it's basically that is a waterhead rating just refers to the how waterproof your tent is and it's usually yep. measured in mils. Um, and yep. that's a probably we'll just go into that. I, yeah, this one is similar, similar thing, but, but it's, it's for devices and things more so, not a yeah. tent. And it, there's a whole IP, I don't know where it starts and finishes, but IPX3, like IPX, IPX4. IPX4 is something like splash proof, which means it can sort of be outside in light rain or be whatever, but it can't be submerged or in direct rain. And then yep. IPX, IPX6 is like submergible to, you know, a meter and then IPX. I mean, I'm not 100 percent sure specifically, it's like that, but yeah. it's sort of yeah, it's ratings and it can take in like to do with that pressurized water from any direction, and, yep. and it just gets more and more waterproof. Yeah. And there's also another um, there's a dust proof rating that goes with that as well, which is I um, I can't think what it is now, but there's an, another number that's sometimes attached to the IPX. Oh yeah, right for dust, which is dust and <laughs> water. It covers dust and water. So if you see two numbers attached to that, uh, so I think it might be maybe it's IPX like four five. Can't believe I, I can't think what that is now. But if you see mm. another number and you go, I don't know what that is, it's probably it's the dust to do with element dust. of it as no, well. I didn't so. actually know that. Uh, tucker bag, which ah, this is, is funny. fabric it's that me. you wrap food in and tie on the end of a stick. Do you a stick? I can picture like, you know, red and oh, red and white checker like. Oh, yeah. Like bag, the good like old a, swag like man, tucker man walking along. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I've never done <laughs> that before. Matilda style. No, I don't think. Mm. I don't know if anyone has. Only in the songs that we sing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Uh, dilly bag is it's a scout term, but kind of got one here loosely. Um, sort of the bag you carry bag. your yeah, crockery but, and cutlery and stuff in. But, yeah, but from a scout term, it's usually made of a, a um, tea towel. A tea towel, tea yeah, towel? and then so, you can use your tea towel to do your dishes. Right. So you yeah. it has yep. two uses. Yep. Yeah. Just a homemade definitely yeah, bag with your plates, cups, bowls, and cutlery in it. So. Blunnies. Blunnies. Blundstone Blundstones. Boots. There's a, a yeah. we, we've got no association with Blundstone. We don't even sell the shoes. But no, it's just on our list. A, it's just a cool word. Blunnies. Yeah, there's l- probably lots of other shoes. Probably. That have little uh, names like that. doesn't cover just Blundstone. It's just generally leather, elastic-sided boots. Can be, yeah. like, unless they're Aaron Williams. Anyone wearing Aaron Williams might probably, take offense Yeah, you don't that. want to call you yeah, Aaron Williams boots yeah, Blunnies. Classier. Yeah. <laughs> Troopy. Troopy. So, yeah. The Toyota I totally Land love Cruiser. to have a Troopy one day. I was be looking good. at them recently and it's like Troopy that's done 460 you know, thousand Ks and it's yeah. still like 30 grand. I'm like, Jesus. There's such a slug yeah. to drive. I used to drive on for emergency services and you just put your foot down on the accelerator. It's just like, Rrr, Rrr, yeah. Really I, slow, I read, they're pretty appealing because I'd like to have one one day because when it's just us and the kids are grown up, when yeah. we want to do touring, but we don't want to have a camp trailer or a caravan or anything like that because yeah. we've got our van, which we love, but it's not full drive. So we're so limited yeah. with all the places we can go. So I reckon yeah. it'd be an awesome. Yeah. Anyway. I don't think it was comfortable to sit in a bit. The agricultural in the front, but That's maybe right. they're different nowadays. So I don't know. Maybe uh, UHF versus UHF CB radio. Well, someone, you know, I didn't actually think there was a difference, but Ka- Caitlin in the office said there is. But it's, uh, I guess, the takeaway from this is just be aware of it because it determines what channels. Uh, like CB stands for citizen band, UHF stands for ultra high frequency. Mm. Um, citizen band, my understanding, used to be the old like twenty-seven meg radio that. 
is obsolete now. Yeah. But now there's UHF CB. So I'm assuming that's referring to the the channels on UHF that uh, just for you could just use the chit chat. Because some of them are for yeah, yeah. emergency and that sort of thing. You can't just chat yeah. on any channel. Mm. Um so it outlines what channels you should and shouldn't be on. Okay. Tinny, small aluminium a, boat. Also a can of beer. Can of beer. Yeah. Uh <laughs> a a crampon. <laughs> I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got a crampon. <laughs> I, 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 never, I didn't think so, I'd. Our, our, uh, our editors, our, um, sorry, the person who's in charge oh, of this is telling us to pull, us, pull our heads sorry. in. Um, oh, man, I mean, it's the thing you put on your boots for ice climbing, but yeah. for some it's reason. Like an, it's like a little metal cage yeah, thing with spikes. That's that right, adds for ice climbing yeah. or, or at various levels of ice climbing. Just but seems probably quite not funny. Probably funny if it wasn't a, a Monday morning mm, and we were tired. Exactly. But. And the very last one we've got on our list is DWR, yep, which Durable we, Water Repellency. Which we also cover in that episode with Ryan from Zempire, but it's an yeah. extra treatment to the waterproofing to just, it's like, I've always said it's like wax for your car. Sort of, it's and it's on, sometimes it's on down sleeping bags as well isn't it like there are some on down sleeping bags that have a bit of dwr yeah. on it to help protect the down and yep. keep the quality jackets of it and everything. And jackets it just and stops the fabric from wetting out it helps that water just beat off, beat off the eventually top. it's going to wet out but yeah. if it's just a light shower like yep. it's awesome when you've got a new jacket and it's got that fresh dwi treatment on it. it's just rained you can grab your jacket and give it a flick and flicking all the water yeah and that's such a good again, feeling so. isn't it yeah mm. we got through it that was like nearly 40 minutes i think of just talking about jibber jabbing these. about these different terms. I don't with, think we come up with any extras though along the no. way, but I'm pretty keen to he- hear if anyone else is. Yeah, <laughs> and we need to. We probably didn't keep a hold of ourselves as well as we should no, in this episode. That. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, feel free to correct us on any of these if and you add, want. Add to our add, list. Add to our list. Get the conversation happening. Uh, as we mentioned before, if you enjoyed this, um, and if you haven't already, subscribe via uh, your favourite podcast aggregator because you love that word. I hate that I word. To get that in. Uh, or via YouTube. And let's keep the conversation going on all your uh, camping lingo on the Snowy's Camping Show Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, where Lauren and I will be answering your questions. Catch you next week. See you guys. <laughs>